Hello, this is Ken from the CC, here today to talk about the new version of Apple's iWork Suite. It doesn't have an official name, it's just called iWork now, but I may refer to it as iWork 14 since it's released right before the year 2014. And as you may know, it has been quite a long time since iWork has received a major update because Apple has been working on the iCloud version and the mobile version of iWork. But now, all of the mobile apps got updated and so did the Mac apps. So let's take a look. For those who don't know exactly what iWork is, it's basically Apple's version of Microsoft Office, it's productivity applications. So we have Keynote for creating presentations, Pages for Word documents and page layouts, and Numbers for items like spreadsheets. So we're going to take a look at these three apps. We'll start with Keynote. And one cool thing about all of these apps is they have all been rewritten from the ground up with new interfaces and 64-bit support, so they are a lot more snappy. So, we're going to go to the file menu here, and as you can see, you are greeted by your open panel. You can open up files from your computer or from iCloud. Everything stays in sync on iCloud. So we'll go to File, New, and we'll choose a template, standard, 4x3 it looks like, or you can have 16x9, and you can set your resolution later if you need to. And there's some really nice built-in templates, and there are some new ones as well, actually. So we'll go to Photo Essay and hit Choose. And here we are with the new version of Keynote. It is Keynote version 6. New icon, new interface, rewritten from the ground up. Now, you'll see you have your slides on the side. That's pretty familiar. There's a couple interface tweaks there. The toolbar on top is new, and your inspector is now built into the window right here. Now, right off the bat, I'm gonna tell you there are some features that got killed off that some people are upset about, and one of those is the customizable toolbar is gone. If you right-click on the toolbar, you have the option to change the icon only, or you can maybe hide the toolbar if you want to, but they got rid of the ability to rearrange the icons, so. Some features may be missing that you liked from the previous versions, and I have noticed that too, but overall, the new features totally make up for it, and I love this update. But if you need any help with trying to work on workarounds or something, just ask, and we'll see what we can do. Or wait for an update. Apple usually fixes those things in updates. So keep that in your mind. We also have an option to bring up some inspectors. So like I said, this is the inspector on the side here. But if you go to the View menu, you can actually pull up some floating inspectors if you so wish. So let's say we want arrange tools. We can actually have a little floating inspector here as well. But I like having everything in line in the sidebar here. And this is context sensitive. So when we click on different items, the format panel will change and we can hide it just by clicking this button. We can also get our document setup parameters and we can get our animations. There's some cool animations built in as well. So if we go to format, for example, if we click on the text here, you can see this adapts to show us our text properties, fill, border, shadows, styles, etc. If we click off of it, it goes back to the slide layout. Maybe we want to change it to this photo page here. So now we have this. We can click here and put in a new photo, or we could just use this existing one right here, just for an example. So I can edit this. I could say, my presentation how to camp like a boss. So there we go. So we can just edit all of this. We can change all of the fonts if we want to. So once again, we can click that and go to our context sensitive inspector here. And we can go to a different font if we want. Maybe Arial Hebrew or Johnny Ives favorite, maybe a variant of Helvetica. And we can make that thin if we want. So yeah, we can change all that right from there. Also, you'll see this across other apps as well. There is still the full screen mode. But you'll notice that it's a lot more useful because the document, if I zoom out here a bit, you can see the slide will now stay center staged and everything's just more all in one. So it's convenient for editing in full screen and it's just much more immersive. So let's zoom in a little bit. So we did a few changes there. Uh, let's say we want a new slide. We'll go down to the plus button. As you can see, popovers are being used a lot more. That's what this kind of interface element is. You'll see that across all the apps. And let's say I want just an information slide here. It'll pop in like that. What not to do while camping. And we can make a very obscure reference to a childhood favorite cartoon. Look out for sea bears. You know, just 
as a general idea. <laughs> yeah, I'm just messing around with that. But you can change the masters here. You can edit the master slide, which that's basically the template. Whatever you change on the master will be affecting every single slide that uses that master. It even warns you before you do that, just in case. Let's say we want to mess around with some animations here. Let's say we want to animate this title. We can go to our animation tab and build in is the effect that brings the item into the canvas. Build out is what takes the item out of the canvas. And an action is like any other additional animation you'd like to add in there. And the build order will let us arrange how these things happen at what time. So let's add an effect. We can scroll through our list here. A lot of them have been updated and there are some new ones. You can click preview in the side here. So fireworks, for example, that actually looks pretty fitting considering it's in the sky right there. So we could do that and maybe we want a typewriter or an iris, maybe a, a cube effect, an anvil. Let's see, flash bulbs. So a lot of nice things. I think we'll stick with the fireworks, so we'll click that. And we could change the duration, the order, the delivery. And you can also edit the build order right from here. And you can just move these around if you have multiple effects. And build out. Let's say we want something to build out here. We could say, just as an example, let's have the photo crumble. So we'll go to add an effect. We'll go to our crumble here so we can preview that. And it crumbles just like that. It's got even little bits of debris and dust in there. It's really cool. So these are just some basic examples of what you can do with the new keynote. Another nice thing is the new sharing. You can share links to this document via iCloud. You can still send someone a direct copy of this. And yes, you can even export an animation, like a, a video sequence of your presentation directly to YouTube or Vimeo. And if you want to change your share settings, you can edit this as well. And when you do share it, your link will show up here and you can give the link to someone and they can view the presentation right in the iCloud web app in their web browser on a Mac or a PC. I believe it'll work on any HTML5 capable browser. So that's a quick look at Keynote. Very nice new interface changes some new features, better integration with iCloud, and rewritten from the ground up for 64-bit. And let's take a look at Pages. Lightning fast opening. We'll go to New, browse some of the new templates here. As you can see, pretty nice. And let's say we want this one. We'll just edit this template for now. Very beautiful, long exposure photograph right there. As you can see, we have this full screen mode once again. And Pages is a lot more useful in full screen mode now. You see this? This is really nice. If you've used Pages before in full screen mode, you know it's really not that useful. But now, it is a lot more streamlined, easier to use. Our view menu still lets us see things like page thumbnails. We have a new word count viewer down here. You can change that to show paragraphs or characters. Now, one little complaint, like I said earlier, some features may be missing and they might have to come back in future updates, but there is no vertical ruler anymore. I have noticed that is not in there, so I'm just letting you know, but you can still add a ruler if you want. So let's say we go down here. Once again, we can use our context-sensitive inspector here to change our fonts and whatnot. Let's say we want to go to some Helvetica action here, and maybe we want to take this, change the color. So you can click the color swatch and get your color inspector, or you can click this little button and suddenly you're brought into a paint store and you can choose <laughs> which color you want there. Alignment, we can adjust all that here too. Spacing, we can choose our bullets, layout, and other options. One of the new little items here in the toolbar is an insert menu. It now has certain things like footnote, page, and everything. You can still get to them using the insert menu, but it's just convenient to have it in the toolbar right there. I don't know if they had that in there before. It looks new to me. Another little tweak with documents here. Let's just open up a blank one here. If you hover over the header area, it's now split up into columns automatically, and you even have an option to insert the page number directly, and you can choose what format that is. So, for example, let's say we had many more pages. Let's say we have five pages in this section here, and we go to our header, we can say insert page number, and we can have it like this, and it will show up like that, and it will automatically adapt on all of our pages. So now let's say we're back on this document, 
and we want to share it with someone. Multiple users can now edit the same document at the same time. So, let's say I wanted to share this. I could say, send a copy, or I could hit share link via iCloud. Now, if you send a copy, it'll actually send the pages file through messages, airdrop, or email. But don't worry, you can still go to file export and choose a format you want to export to your hard drive, and then you can distribute it later. But if you want to have other people interact with the document with you in iCloud, you can do that. So you go to sharing here, share link via iCloud. You can have it sent through Twitter, messages, email, or Facebook, or you can just copy the link directly. So I'm going to save this in iCloud just as a demo. All right, so now the icon turns green, and we can go back and change our settings later if we want, but it automatically copied the link for us. So this is the link to the document. So I can go over to Safari. And I can put that in here. It'll load the document in pages for iCloud. And I can give this document to multiple people. Right now it'll tell me who's using it. Right now it's just me. But other people can log in eventually and their names will show up here. So let's say we want to make some changes. We can click on this here. And let's say I want to add a reflection to that. Maybe turn down the reflection a bit. And then if we go back to pages here, then you will notice the reflection updated there. Let's do one more change. Let's say we don't want the reflection. We want this kind of border. And we're going to put a name in here. Gordon, Gordon Freeman. And let's say I want this text to be orange. So I'll go to the text tab, get a color here make that orange, and maybe I want this to be a light blue. So we changed the border, some text, and we changed some fonts here. So now, if we go back to pages, and we give it a little bit of time, it will update. And there we go, there's our changes. So, if you have multiple people editing it in the browser, it'll update in real time more quickly, but if you have the document on your computer here, it may take a little bit longer to update, but it still stays synced. So now, Let's say we're done sharing. We can go to our settings here and say stop sharing. And now it'll say this document is no longer available. Close. So that is a feature that will work across the iWork applications. So now let's go to numbers. Let's do a little demo of numbers. Let's go to file new. And you have these nice templates. We could do just a blank one. We'll just do something simple here. As you can see, here's that new toolbar. You have your functions still, tables that you can scroll through in these new popovers, similar to the iOS version. Text, shapes, media, and you can add comments. You still have those sharing features and the context sensitive bar right here. So let's edit the spreadsheet here. Let's shrink this down a little bit. Maybe we'll just do this and we'll drag this up here and we'll just put in some years. Let's say the year 2013 and then we could do 2014, 2015, 2016. So we'll just do an example here. Let's type in year and we'll say revenue. So here we have our table style so we can change that if we want. Let's do maybe yeah, that, that blue one looks good. And we can change our fonts here. So let's say I want all of these cells to have a different look here. Let's go to our text tab. And let's do a center alignment on there. And we can do a center alignment on here as well. Maybe we'll make that a little bit bold. And maybe bring up the size a little bit. So now we did some basic formatting with this. And we can reposition it if we want. It's nice and smooth. Now let's put in some revenue here. We'll say... 13 billion, 16, 18, oh, that's 38. Well, we'll stick with that then. 24 and 45. We had a really good year in 2017. So now I'm going to change that font to look the same. So we'll go to our color here. And let's just say I want to match it identically. So I can just use the magnifying glass here and match the colors. Maybe have it a little bit lighter. So there you go, and the rows will automatically alter as well as part of this little template we picked. And we still have all of our cell changes here. We can change the border colors. 
and our fill. A new feature you'll see across all of the iWork apps, but it's really useful in numbers, is interactive charts. So let's say I have my data here. I'll select my data. We'll go to the chart menu. And as you can see, we still have these very nice 2D and 3D charts. And they're very customizable. But the new feature is interactive. So I'll choose an interactive bar graph here. You can actually drag this and see how the data changes over time. So I can drag it back to 2014. That was our revenue in 2014. Or I could drag it to the end here in 2017 and I'll see an animation of how much it grew there. I can add legends here, maybe a border. I can change the colors. I can put a texture in there, maybe this. And if I hover over them, they will automatically preview for you. So let's say I want that one. And let's say I want to change some steps here. We can just put some more steps in there to get some more numbers visible. This is all linkable. So if we needed to make a change, let's say in 2014, we didn't have 16 billion. We actually had 23 billion. It'll automatically update. So if I go to this, it is now automatically updated. And let's say, oh no, that was a terrible mistake. We had a terrible year. We only had 1 billion. It'll automatically update there as well. So that's a very cool feature. Once again, that's in all the applications, pages, keynote, and it's in numbers. So that's a quick look at some of the basic new features and the new interface changes in the new versions of the iWork applications. So if you currently have iWork, these will be a free update and they are free with every new Mac. iLife used to be free with every new Mac, but now iWork is as well. So I hope you enjoyed the demo and let us know what you think about these apps. If you have any other questions, let us know. All right, and we'll see you later. Don't forget to subscribe to stay in touch with more Real Deal videos and click that like button if you liked the video. And if you want to see more content from us or apply for a YouTube partnership, visit us on our other great websites.